Good evening, everyone. It's really wonderful to see all of you here tonight. There's almost 30 of us here, so amen to that. And welcome to all of you who are at home watching online. You are missed, but we welcome you just the same, so it's great that we can all join together. So despite the fact that we are going back to Orange after midnight tonight, we are going to take advantage of this time that we have together to just be together as brothers and sisters and to sing and to worship. And if you didn't see that post today on our Facebook page, uh, Pastor Mona will be giving us a video update of the particulars for our congregation uh, tomorrow. So look out for that. Um, but not a whole lot has changed, so we're really blessed. Our doors will still be open, and like I said, you'll be able to hear all about that tomorrow with Pastor Mona's video. And we are going to take time later on this evening to pray for our province. But, beloved, God is not surprised by any of this. Amen? Amen. And we've been practicing this for a while, so we're just going to switch back and forth as we have to, and we're not going to be moved because we're going to find God in the changes. Amen? Amen? All right, so welcome again, and I'm going to start tonight off with a quote. It says, Nothing tends more to cement the hearts of Christians than praying together. Never do they love one another so well as when they witness the outpouring of each other's hearts in prayer. And that's by Charles Finney. So I think that's pretty amazing. We get to come together tonight as brothers and sisters. We get to witness each other, bear each other's uh, burdens, to pray for one another, and to also storm heaven for those who aren't here tonight as well. So we'll go into our first prayer request tonight, which is to pray for God's presence to come this evening, to lead us and as we join together and storm heaven as a church body this evening and all year through. So this is our first uh, prayer service in the new year. And like Pastor Mona mentioned the other night, to pray for God's presence. We have the Holy Spirit within us, but just to take that time, like I was talking with my sister today, just to, to sit and be in his presence, to enjoy him. For me, life can be so busy, and all the responsibilities are always weighing on me and pulling at me, a lot of distractions. So this morning, Roxanne, I got up, and it was hard. But I did it, and I heard Jackson awake, my son, and I was like, nope, I'm doing this, and I'm spending that time with God. So I didn't do it great, and it's not about perfection, but tomorrow I will try again to get up even earlier and just take that step of obedience to spend time with my father and to bask in his presence because we really do need that in the days to come. So I'm going to take an opportunity just to welcome him here tonight, if you guys want to storm heaven with me, just to ask, welcome the Holy Spirit to come tonight, to move amongst us, to touch our hearts, and just for him to hear our prayers. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord God, so much just for who you are. I thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die for us on the cross to reconcile us back to you. You are a good, good father. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, Lord. And you are worthy of our praise and our honor, our worship this evening. Lord, I thank you for all those who came out tonight, Lord. We welcome you here this evening, Lord. And we ask you to just come and touch our hearts and lay upon our hearts what you would have us pray for, Lord God. You see all things, Lord. You know all things. And we need you, God. We want this prayer service to honor and glorify you, God. And so tonight I ask that you would touch the worship, you would touch all those who are online, and all those who are here tonight, Lord God. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
is intense sometimes. Whew. Like I can't breathe. All right, so I have a, a word of encouragement for you guys, which I think goes right along with everything that God is doing in our church right now and what he is calling us to. So it says, defense and community. We are saved by grace through faith in Christ. And God has designed the church community to be one of the vessels of that grace. The world, or rather the sinful desires that are in the world, want us to walk away from the living God, and because we live in this broken world that contends daily for our attention and affection, we need people around us that can remind us, encourage us, challenge and affirm us to hold on to the confession of our faith. This is the defense that godly community offers. When Paul wrote to the church in Philippi, he addressed a community deeply embedded in the pagan world of the first century. As soon as the gospel began to take root in the city, opposition emerged. Into this embattled context, the apostle writes about how important the church's life together is for our witness in society. Paul says that such unity, stability, depth, and fearlessness in the face of the onslaught becomes a clear sign to those who don't believe. Through standing unified against insult, slander, and threat, and continuing undaunted in moving forward in the mission, the church shows herself to be true. The strong bonds between saints demonstrate that they are in the sphere of salvation. 
which means their opponents are in the sphere of destruction. There is a serious danger in neglecting real, consistent, committed Christian community. We will see that neglecting this kind of community goes hand in hand with a heart that is starting to lose its fire for Christ. The truth is that God is the creator of all things, and we need to stay close to him and each other so that we can hold on to our confession to the end. So that doesn't sound like a word of encouragement, but it's pretty bold, but it, uh, it is encouraging because it's just encouraging us, which I'll talk about more. I'll give you guys some practical steps later how to apply this, but I, I need you guys, and I hope that you guys need me too, and I need to be uplifted, encouraged. Sometimes I even need to be rebuked, but it's all for good, my good, because God's glory, and I just want to encourage you guys tonight, like, you're not here by accident. The Holy Spirit drew you guys here, drew me here tonight. And it's amazing to a world that's watching that through even just this pandemic that we're still standing strong in our faith. And I encourage someone today that despite what people are going through who don't have God or who are really, you know, truly going through difficult times during this pandemic, that as a Christian, we're Christians first and then the rest follows. So in our workplace, in our unsaved family members' lives, wherever we might find ourselves, we're to be that hope. But it's not on us, it's on him who's in us. So I'm thankful I have you guys as my family. And uh, I'll, sh I'll share some more later. So I'll let Chrissy sing another song. The next song that we're going to sing is, is an old hymn. And it's called, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Many of you may know it, but we've, there's a version that we just heard recently that it's combined with called The Blessing. And as I listened to this song, it just, God just reminded me, you know, that I have everything in Him. Sometimes we just tend to forget that. We tend to forget that with life going on, we, we kind of go our own way and we forget to be in the in the presence of God we forget to bring everything all our needs to God and then we wonder why am I struggling why am I so depressed why am I so anxious and this this song just reminded me he says you know we have trials and temptations but we can bring them to God we can bring everything before his throne so as we sing this song, if you don't know the words, I just encourage you to just close your eyes and just focus on the words tonight and just reflect and just, just bask in God's presence tonight. Upon you and a thousand generations. 
generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming in your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you Our prayer request number two is to pray for those who preach the word of God from our pulpit and all around the, the world. Pray for God's leading, anointing, strength, and protection as they walk in obedience to the call. So there's there's a few people coming to mind that I could come ask, pray for this, but they preach. So I'd like to ask somebody else, does anybody have it on their heart to pray for this tonight? Maya? Could you come up and pray for this? <laughs> they do need our covering, beloved. We're so blessed that we get truth from this pulpit time and time again. And the days are pretty difficult right now. And for them to stay faithful and to walk in obedience, we're so grateful. So we, we do need to cover them in prayer. Lord God, first I want to thank you for our pastors, God, that they that they preach your word, God. They don't stray from your word and they stick to your word according to your word, according to the Bible, Lord. And I thank you so much for the covering that you have over this church, over this congregation. I, I thank you for truth, Lord. And Father, I am praying for 
an anointing over, or, over your pastors, over, over your ministers, over your reverends, over everyone, Lord God, not even ac- according to do- denominations, but Father, I am praying for there to be such an uprising of truth in the spirits of your people, that pastors who have been preaching uh, not according to your word, Lord God, awaken, and they, they seek you out, Lord. They, they read the word, God, and you speak to their hearts and they receive, and they have conviction over where they have gone, Lord God. I am praying for truth to be spoken worldwide. Father, it is through your spirit, through your word, Lord God, that causes us to understand truth, to be drawn to you, Lord God. It is not the word that, it's not preaching that itchy ears want to hear that cause people to go to you. They go to themselves, they go to control, Father. So I am praying specifically, Father, Please, Lord God, let there be an awakening to truth. Let your spirit take over. Worldwide, Lord God, let there be revival worldwide, beginning with the pastors. Father, I pray for a covering and a protection over them, Lord God. I pray, Father, that they cry out to you to to search their heart and to reveal the depths of their hearts, Lord God to expose the junk that's in their lives, God, so that they can be just closer and closer and closer to you in relationship, Lord God, that there is a passion that comes out of their hearts again, Lord God, as they cry out to you, Lord. And and with that passion, God, they speak with conviction, they speak with truth, Lord God, and their spirits minister to our spirits, Lord God. Father, I pray for a boldness, I pray for protection, Lord God. I pray for protection for their bodies with this COVID, Lord God, with any kind of other disease that might happen, Lord God. Keep them safe. I know that I can ask you for healing. I know that I can ask you for protection. We can't ask you for too much, Lord God. So let there be a covering over your people, Lord God. Protect us. Protect your pastors, everyone, Lord God. Cover them so that they can continue to go on. And Father, during this whole time where things are gotten so confusing father i pray for such a an ability to hear your voice and how they are to walk and how they are to lead your people lord god father i pray they speak with your voice father i pray when they speak lord that people's fears are calmed that hope is is just increases lord god and that people's their eyes are just directed and shifted to you lord I thank you again. I thank you for Pastor Mona. I thank you for Pastor Glenn. I thank you for this church body, Lord God. We are a strong body here. We are a, we are a people who love one another, and it's real in this congregation, Lord. And I hear that there's not a whole lot out there like that. So I'm praying that there's, there's more and more added all the time, Lord God. Let some churches start small, but let them grow and grow and grow because more people are seeking you, Lord. And I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, the next prayer request is to pray for our new reading plan through the word and that God would give us a greater hunger, thirst, and understanding for his word as we go forward together in this journey. So I I know I started it, my husband started it, I really do enjoy it. It's not too much reading, but this app is incredible. So for those of you who don't know about this, you can go to your Google Play Store or your app iTunes Store and search for Through the Word, download it, and then you have to sign up. You can sign up through your Facebook or your email. And as a church right now, we're going through the first journey, which is start. And if you go on our One Body Ministry, Pastor Mona does her morning devotions, and she shares some of the what we read on there, and we get to comment and share with one another. So it's really wonderful. So if you'd like to take part in that, we encourage you to do so. And I would like to ask Pastor Mona if she would come pray for this one. Definitely, I want to pray for that. Amen. 
Oh God, we know, Lord, that without your word, we would be lost, but yet you've given us so much resource. You've given us, Lord, uh, as we just prayed, a pulpit that gives us the word, and God, I have been ha I've had the word since I first came to you, God, with, you know, just the whole counsel of God, Lord, that gives us so much, Lord, and not just the Logos word, God, where we get information, but we get Rama words, Lord, where it just changes us from the inside out. God, I pray, Lord, for a deep for hunger. I pray that you would touch this program. And as we go, Lord, that we would not slip back to our defaults of not just being faithful, but God, that we would continue. And for all those that are just struggling just to start, God, I'm asking, Lord, that you would just increase their hope, increase the joy, God, of wanting to be with other people doing this, Lord, because a lot of people are, are commenting, God. And I thank you, Lord, that we are getting just the, the you know, this the idea of what you are speaking to us. And it's not just us. You're, you're, you're speaking the same thing everywhere to all of your people to get back to the word, to love the truth one more time, because it is only truth that will keep us in the days to come. It will not be the preaching. It will not be the church, God. It will be your word implanted in our soul, God, just lifting us up and drawing us to a deeper experience with you, God. So I do pray, Lord, a special blessing on our starting of this journey called Start. Oh, God, that we would continue to read Mark and Colossians and just get so much from it that we hunger for the next journey, God. Let it be so for this congregation. Let us just speak to our friends, Lord, that are everywhere else and talk to them about just the simplicity of just coming back to the simple foundation of just picking up a chapter at a time. God, I thank you for what you're going to do. And Lord, I praise your name and I glorify you for even bringing us to this place despite the mess out there. And God, you're speaking to us very, very clearly. You delight over us, you sing over us, you dance over us, and you're just wanting us to have an intimate relationship with you. And Lord, thank you for bringing us back to the word. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.
every season and you are still God, I have a reason to sing, I have a reason to worship, all of my life in every season and you are still God, I have a reason to sing. to worship and I will bring praise I will bring praise no weapon formed against me shall remain I will rejoice I will declare God is my victory and he is the end this is my prayer prayer request is to pray for the Better Together home groups and that God would use them to help us have deep and meaningful relationships that will help us grow, heal, find freedom, and draw others in and touch our community. So you guys might be thinking, well, we're back in orange. So no worries. There's going to be some changes, but our home groups are going to go forward. Uh, and like I said, Pastor Mona is going to give us all the updates and details tomorrow. So I really would like uh, to ask Erica if she would come up and pray for this. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we would just want to thank you for this body, God, that you've, it's not by chance, God, that we are part of this body. It's not by chance that you've brought each and every individual here, Lord. And so we want to thank you, oh God, that we do have a place, Lord God. We have a place to not just hear the word as we've already prayed before tonight, but not just a, it's not just a place to hear and receive, but it's a place to grow and to be discipled. And Lord, we want to thank you, oh God, that that commission, Lord God, to go and make disciples, Lord, has been uh, just encouraged here at this church. And so, Lord, I do want to pray, oh God, just for this home group. You see how the enemy wants to keep us separate, Lord God. And there's nothing that would please him more than to have us isolated. But I do want to pray, Lord God, especially with this whole change of color, Lord God, in our province, that people would still fight, Lord God, the good fight of faith, the fight to be together, to fight to, to grow, the fight, oh God, to, to gather together and to be accountable to one another and to be the light to each other and to be uh, that just a, uh, that place, Lord God, of, of encouragement for each other, Lord Jesus. Oh God Almighty, because we are better together, Lord God. And Lord Jesus, you say, oh God, that that you know that the, there's that scripture lord god that a, a three a three sta strand cord cannot e be easily broken and so lord i pray lord jesus that you would knit us together lord god in this season and that nothing oh god can thwart your plans lord god especially not your plans for us to grow lord god because together we can be lord god a brighter light for your for your kingdom, Lord Jesus, for the gospel. And so, Lord, I do pray, oh God, just for courage, Lord God. Courage to fight against the lies. Courage, oh God, to fight against the oppression, to fight against discouragement and whatever attack the enemy comes because he is, I'm sure, displeased with our purpose in uniting, Lord Jesus. I pray, oh God, that you would bring unity, Lord God, in our midst. Lord God, that may there be, Lord Jesus, moments, Lord God, of, of divine encounter with you, Lord. But together, Lord, 
Lord, we would discover the fear of the Lord. Together, Lord God, we would discover you, Lord Jesus, in greater measure. And Lord, I pray, oh God, that you bless those times, Lord God, where we come together, Lord, to, to know you in a greater measure, to know each other and to be in each other's, Lord God, uh, bubbles, Lord God, but to be in each other's lives, Lord Jesus. And Lord, to just to fulfill the greatest commands, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And so, Lord, I pray, oh God, that you would just also touch the lessons, Lord God, touch the leaders as they teach, Lord God, but touch our discussions, our groups, Lord God. And I pray, oh God, that the greater number of us would fight, Lord God, to come together, fight against fatigue, fight against the busyness, fight against, Lord God, every excuse that our flesh will give, Lord God. Oh God, and I pray that there would be a great reward, Lord Jesus. I pray there would be also a great revival amongst us, Lord. And I pray, Lord Jesus, as you send us out, Lord God, there would be a great harvest as well. And Lord, and so I just pray, oh God, just that you would touch this time together, Lord. And help us to stay faithful, Lord God, as a remnant of your church, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I thought this was kind of cool because I didn't know we were going back to Orange today. But prayer request number five says, Pray that despite COVID-19 still being present, that we would not be defined by the pandemic or led by fear, but by who God is and who we are in Christ despite it. Mm -hmm. Amen? <laughs> I'd like to ask Pastor Glenn if he would come pray for this one. pray. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. You see, Lord, the situation that the, the countries are in around the world, in this area, and Father, you see your church. Lord, we just ask for your empowerment to be the church that you desire during this time of difficulty. Lord, that people who have no hope will see hope through us, Lord. Let us be channels of blessing and hope, Lord, in this community, Lord. That, uh, Lord, there's so much fear out there now. Just, uh, I just ask you to empower your church. That fear will banish from each life. And, Lord, that hope will spring forth, you know, and touch others in this area, Lord. So we just thank you, Lord. Lord, you say in your word, you have not given us a spirit of fear. Lord, but also uh, not, to, not to go throw caution to the wind, but give us wisdom also. And how to walk uh, during this particular time. And uh, Lord, let's, let, us be fo let your church be focused on you. And let joy well up within each one of us, Lord, in spite of the situation that we are in. Lord, we saw the Apostle Paul, Lord, uh, he talked about, I uh, think, 16 times in the book of Philippians about rejoicing and joy uh, while he was in prison. And Lord, help, help your church to be, have the same attitude also, Lord, during this time. That they will not, the be, depression will be banished, anxiety will be banished. And that joy and peace will flow out through your church body into this community, Lord, that uh, do not have hope. Those who are losing their jobs, Lord, and, and uh, diminished hours at work, Father, we just ask that uh, they'll see hope in your church body. And so, Father, we're asking for your help. We're asking for your assistance for your church. We're asking for your empowerment. We're asking for your infilling of your Holy Spirit. Father, without you, we can do nothing. And so just help us to rely on you. Let, it, let you be our resource for this time, for this hour, for this place, Lord. And through it all, we ask that your kingdom will advance, that your name will be honored and glorified through each member of your church body, Lord, and that you will be lifted up and people will be drawn to you. Father, we just ask that, uh, that people live lives in such a way, totally dependent on your Holy Spirit, that the people that don't know you will see the difference and be attracted to you. So we're just asking you'll be lifted up, you'll be lifted uh, up and honored and glorified through your church by your empowerment of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. You are our hope, oh God. You are the hope of the nations, Lord. Oh Lord, we just want to proclaim that tonight, oh God. Hallelujah.
takeaway from the devotion that I shared with you guys earlier um, is for you and I to take part in the very things that God is providing for us to be reminded, encouraged, challenged, affirmed in holding on to the confession of our faith. So things like our Bible reading plan, taking part and even just sharing you know, someone the other day was, said they were too shy. And I mean, I understand that's okay, but it's okay to share. It's not about being perfect, just sharing your thoughts. What did God show you? You know, or hey, you could even say, 
I'm having a hard time reading the word today. And then your brothers and sisters can encourage you and help you and pray for you. So um, taking part, especially in our uh, Better Together small groups on Sunday evenings um, and just a challenge for us to get out of our comfort zones because it's so easy to isolate especially during a pandemic and now we're going back into orange so the fact that we can still come here change a little bit of the guidelines might change but we can still come hallelujah thank you lord um so just keep moving forward and just take those little steps of obedience you know obey those nudges when you feel like staying home but that Holy Spirit saying, go, you need to go, you need to be encouraged, um, just so you can deepen your relationship, not only with others, but with him too, because God has shown me in the last several months about deepening my relationships with others. It's, it's wonderful to have that koinonia fellowship, but also that God is trying to show me his love through others. I lim I'm limiting myself by putting a barrier around myself and not wanting to being fearful of getting hurt or rejected by not reaching out or having that fellowship. So that's what God's been showing me in the last several months. And it's hard, but he's given me lots of opportunities, and uh, he's going to continue doing that work in me, thankfully. So there's a quote here. It says, Every Christian community must realize that not only do the weak need the strong, but also that the strong cannot exist without the weak. The elimination of the weak is the death of fellowship, which is by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. So it's just to say, when you are weak, let your brothers and sisters pick you up. When you are strong, you be that brother or sister to pick the other person up. And it's really a beautiful thing to the unbelieving world to witness that quantity of fellowship amongst us to see God's love in action when everybody else is in chaos and super fearful. And we are still human, and we do still have the flesh, so you're allowed to have your moments too. But um, definitely in the days that we're living and the days to come, we really, really do need each other. Amen? Amen. All right, so prayer request number six is to pray for those struggling with addictions and bondage of any kind, and that they would find freedom in Christ, and to pray for the open door that we do have with the detox, and celebrate recovery because it's not a coincidence and i think in the days weeks months years to come we're going to um, see more of that and god's going to use us to show and help and equip them to find freedom in christ and we've already seen that i i think in the last year especially um, so i'd like to ask roxy to come up and pray for this as she's our cr coordinator Hallelujah. God, we thank you so much, Lord, that, God, you just provide the lifelines in life, God, and just a community where we can come together and and just find healing, Lord, and, and be together and, and just the support that we need, God. Like Ashley had just shared, Lord, when one is strong, Lord, and one is weak, the strong can help the weak and, and vice versa, God. And this is what community is all about, coming together, Lord. And, and God, we thank you so much, Lord, that even in our hurts and our, our habits and our hang-ups, God, and all the things, Lord God, that you so desire to free us from, Lord God, so that, Lord, we're able to do life better, God, in like we just heard as well, in, in doing relationships, Lord God, and having fellowship, God, and Lord, we ask, Lord God, that you, you help us, God. I know this has been a cry of my heart, Lord God, to start with me first, God, to help me go after all the things, Lord God, and and to just grab hold of you, God, because, Lord, we can't do this, Lord, unless you're the center of it all, God. And, Lord, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you will just help us, Lord God. Help us to, to take hold of these lifelines, Lord God, that you put before us, God, in order to experience the freedom, Lord God, that you sent your son, God, to 
on the cross, Lord, that God, everything that we experience, everything that God just has hold of us, Lord God, that, you know, it, it just hinders us from experiencing life to, to its fullest, Lord God, experiencing relationship with you and others, Lord God, the things that rob us, and it can be anything, Lord God, it, it just doesn't even have to be alcohol or drugs, Lord, those are the serious things, God, but it's anything, God, that robs our affection away from from you, God, and what you have in life for us. So God, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you will just help us, Lord God, to just put our hearts into this. God, I pray for the team, Lord God, that Lord, you have set before, Lord God, these people who are coming in. God, you bring your people home. You call your children home. And God, this is the safe place, Lord, that you have provided, Lord, where they can come and get the healing and, and just be uh, mended, Lord God, their wounds that run so deep. And God, it's so wonderful that we can come together, God, and just have that place where we just share our stories, Lord God, where we share our struggles. And God, we can leave with a sense of hope in knowing, God, that we don't have to remain the same. God, you are so great. Lord, we thank you for the open doors, Lord God, even at the detox. And God, now being in the orange phase, Lord, we're not quite sure what that looks like, but God, nothing takes you by surprise. Nothing moves you, Lord God. God, you're the still on your throne and nothing will shake you from your throne, God. And we thank you that you are so big and so mighty, Lord God. And everything that falls into our days, Lord God, is first sifted through your hand. God, we need not worry, Lord. You had to remind me of that today, God, and, and just going back to orange, Lord God, just feeling the weight of that, you know, just the constant change. But God, we thank you so much that, God, we can get rooted and grounded in you, God, and you're our anchor. You're the one who just keeps us in the midst of the storm. So God, we ask, Lord God, that you help us, Lord. God, we ask that you just be with those at the uh, detox and, and the rehab. God, we ask for a special covering over them. God, it must be so hard, God, being inside. And God, they're there because they want to be there. They want to get the help that they need. But God, being isolated from from life, Lord God, and just, you know, because of all the restrictions right now, it must be tough. So God, we're asking, Lord, as Israel goes, Lord, and those that you have surrounded there, God, that, Father, they, they would become a community, Lord, but that, God, that you would be the center of that community. God, you only need one person. You only need one that'll say, here I am. And God, I ask, Lord Jesus, that the ripple effect will take place. God, that you will draw the hurting home, Lord, close to your bosom, Lord God, like you so desire. God, we thank you for these lifelines. We thank you for the open doors that, God, you just continuously do for us. God, we are a blessed people. So God, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you just help us to come together. God, that you would help us to be sensitive to those that are hurting around us. And that, God, we will not just use this for our own selves, Lord, but that God, we would take it and multiply it, Lord God, for the furtherance, Lord, of your kingdom. God, you are so good to us. God, let us not take advantage of the things that you put before us, God, so that we will become whole in you, Lord God, and that we would do life better together, Lord God, because of all the freedom that you've granted to us. So God, we thank you in advance, Lord God. You are so good to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. So as we sing our last songs, we're going to sing, Great and mighty is the Lord our God. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. So let's just praise him tonight. Hallelujah. Let's proclaim his goodness tonight.
I just want to finish off with this scripture. Uh, Joshua 1.9 says, Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Amen. 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 So thank you all for joining us online, and we'll be back here again next Tuesday at 7 p.m.